In this section, I am going to talk about calculating the probability of an event and we use the event composition method. Let me talk, explain this using this example. Of the voters in a city, 40% are Republicans and 60% are Democrat. So I use R for the Republicans and I use D for the Democrat. Then probability of R equal 0.4 and probability of Democrat equal 0.6. Among all Republicans, 70% are in favor of a bond issue. So in favor of bond issues, I use F. So, here, understand the problem very clearly. We, uh, there are two groups, Republican and Democrat. Then, this talk about among the Republicans. And then, we talk about this group. So, among this group, we use another sample or another group who are in favor of a bond issues. Therefore, you, we already know this group, the uh, 70% is coming from the Republican group. We already know it is from the Republican group. Therefore, this 70% should be probability of favor of bond issue, that is the probability of favor of bond issue, but it is coming from the Republican, therefore given Republican, so this is 0.7. Similarly, 80% of the Democrat favor the issue. Then we know this 80% coming from Democrats, we already know. Therefore, that is the given part, but 80% of Democrat favor the issues. Therefore, F given D equal 0.8. If, water, if a voter is selected at random in the city, what is the probability that he or she will favor the bond issue? Then, they are asking, probability of favor the bond issue, right? So, they are asking probability of F. So, consider again this problem. There are two groups, Republican and Democrat. So, now the, we have 70% of Republican, and they are in favor of a bond issue and 80% from the Democrat. So here also we have, well, this is the actually 70% this one from this and 80% this one from this group, right? Now they are asking, this is F, I write down and here F, right? Favor. So they are asking probability of favor Again, think about this. There are two groups. Therefore, we need to consider both groups. So, how do we do probability of favor? We can consider favor and Republican. It means the favor in the Republican group. Union, favor of the Democrat group. So, this is the notation we uh, write for this problem. What is the probability that he or she will favor the bond issue? That is the probability of F. Then we know Democrat and Republican are disjoint. Right? They are disjoint. Or we can say mutually exclusive events. If they are mutually exclusive events, we have this union, we can write probability of F and R plus probability of M, F 
and D. Why? You know, if A and B, let me show you, uh, remind you, probability of A and B equal 0 if A and B are disjoint or mutually exclusive. So again, we know uh, Democrat and Republican are, Republican and Democrat are mutually exclusive. Therefore, intersection of, uh, sorry, this, uh, yes, uh, favor and R and favor and D are mutually exclusive. Therefore, we need to find the probability of F and R. Yes, we don't know the probability of F and R. But we know the given probabilities and uh, probability of R and D. So, now we know this one, probability of F given R, because we know that part, this equal probability of F and R divided by probability of R. Therefore, from this equation, we can write probability of F and R, we can write probability of R time probability of F given R. Similarly, we can write the probability of F and D, probability of D time probability of F given D. Now we know all the probabilities. This is point 0.4 and this is point 0.7 plus this one point 0.6 and point 0.8. This is point 0.28 plus point 0.48 which is equal point 0.76. It is known that a pa patient with the disease will respond to treatment with probability equal to 0.9. If three patients with the disease are treated and respond independently, find the probability that at least one will respond. Before I explain this problem, let me remind you the multiplicative law of probability. What is the multiplicative law of probability for two sets? Probability of A intersection B equal probability of A time probability of B given A. This is the multiplicative law of probability for the two sets. But how about for the three sets. So, probability of A intersection, B intersection, C. So, how do we find or use the multiplicative law for this one? So, what I do, I use probability A intersection B as a one set and other event, actually the next one, C. So now I apply this for this case, then we can write probability A intersection B time probability C given A intersection B. Now we have probability A intersection B. So what is the probability of A intersection B? Uh, by the multiplicative law, you can we can write probability A time probability B given A. So, we can write down this probability of A time probability of B given A time probability of C given A intersection B. So, this is the multiplicative law for the three sets. Actually, you can use this rule for any number of sets. In the general, we can say probability of A1 intersection, A2 intersection, A3 up to AK. We can write this one, probability of A1 
time probability of A2 given A1 time probability of A3 given A1 intersection A2 like that find the last one probability of a k then you write the that is a k is the last one we have here so we write the rest of as a intersection so probability of this a1 intersection a2 intersection up to a k minus 1 now i define the following events I use A, at least one of the three patients will respond. And B1, the first patient will not respond. B2, the second patient will not respond. And B3, the third patient will not respond. Okay. So, there are three patients. There are four. Consider the uh, events A. A event, at least one of the three patients will respond. At least one. So, then can we write down a complement using B1, B2, B3? If A is at least one, then it can be one or two patient or three patient, right? Then a complement A is that none of them, uh, none of them will respond, right? Therefore, A complement is, what is the B1? The first patient will not respond. Therefore, B1 intersection, B2 intersection, B3. So, B1 is the first patient will not respond. B2 is the second patient will not respond. Therefore, B1 and B2 is the first and second person will, uh, patient uh, will not respond. Similarly, we can use the intersection for B3, then all patients will not respond. Right? So, prob we are asked, they are asking probability of A, we can write the probability of A equal 1 minus probability of A complement. Right? Then, 1 minus, what is the probability of A complement? That is B1 intersection, B2 intersection, B3. Then, we will apply the multiplicative law. So, what is the multiplicative law? Yes, I explained this here. Probab uh, in the green color, probability of A intersection, B intersection, C equal probability of A time probability of B given A time probability of C given A intersection B. So, applying that, we can write down probability of B1 intersection, B2 intersection, B3 equal probability of B1, then probability of B2 given B1, and probability of B3 given B1 intersection B2. Right. Now we need to find the uh, probabilities of these events. We know these events are independent. How do we know? It say patient with disease will respond treatment with probability equal 9 if 3 patients with the disease are treated and respond independently. Therefore, probability of we need B2 given B1 because of independent this is equal probability of B2. So, what is the probability of B2? That is 0.1. Why? Because you see here will respond treatment with probability equal to 0.9. Ah, the Respond probability equal 0.9. Probability of B2 is the uh, not respond. Therefore, that must be 0.1. Right? It means, how do we get this one? This equal 1 minus 0.9. That is the 0.1. Right? Similarly, uh, let me consider this. Probability B3 given B1 intersection B2. 
So this equal probability of B3. So again, this is also 0.1. Then, how do we write the probability of A that equal 1 minus by this 1 minus probability uh, yes uh, 1 minus actually this one uh, coming from this equation but probability of b1 and this come to here right because you know p a equal 1 minus uh, that so therefore uh, i will write probability of b1 it is 0.1 probability of b2 given b1 0.1 and the last one also 0.1 so this is 1 minus 0.1 to power 3 which is 0.999 let me explain here something else now you now you may uh, you um, may let me explain here this part probability b3 given b1 intersection b2 we know b3 b1 b2 are independent therefore b uh, b1 and b2 that is the one event and b3 are also independent let me uh, check it so probability of b3 this one equal probability of b3 given and b1 and b2 over probability of b1 and b2 so if uh, these are independent we can write down this probability of b3 probability of b1 probability of b2 we can write this because of independent otherwise we cannot do this one we cannot use this so then this one similarly we can write probability of b1 and b2 so we see probability of b1 b1 is cancelled out probability of b2 b2 is cancelled out then the remain is probability of b3 so that is the one i use over here